I just wanted to do a little quick follow up to the last video that I did on the serial killer or the so called serial killer, James Childers. In that story, they kept referring to a man that had been found murdered in, or, well, they never said that this man was found murdered. They didn't really have a cause of death, but because of the scene, because of the fact that he was undressed and just some other things that the police wouldn't go into detail about, they believed that he had been murdered in some way, killed in some way. And they kept referring to him as a male prostitute. I did a little bit more, um, watched a few more videos on Childers and tried to find a little bit more about this man. I did come up with a name. His name was Kenneth Wiseman. And there's very little about him. He isn't listed anywhere as a murder victim. Um, before police believed he was. The only thing I could really find about him was um, that his date of death was um, 2004. He lived in Clarksburg, West Virginia. He was 47 years old at the time of his death. He's got some possible associates here, but I'm not going to go into those, you know, names. Um, I really couldn't find anything that led to the reason that the police believed him to be a murder victim of Childers, other than the fact that they lived very close to each other, probably would have seen each other around the neighborhood, and, like I said before, the police talked about Childers having a particular lifestyle, and they wouldn't go into detail about that either. So they kind of held on to some information, but they did look into him to see if there could have been a link. And if they found one, they kept it very quiet. But the, the woman whose body was found where Childers told police to look, uh, was 27 year or 25 year old Carrie Lynn Baker. Now she's listed on the Charlie Project, and she went missing July the first, 2008, in Clarksburg, West Virginia. She was a white female. She disappeared sometime in early July 2008, and her remains were found in June of 2009 in Barber County. James Childers mailed a tape to the police confessing to four acts of arson and five homicides, including Baker, and revealed the location of her body where the police did find her. Carrie Lynn Baker had been hit in the head twice with a blunt force object. She had been missing for almost a year when she was found. Uh, Police believe he murdered Carrie in his home and set fire to the home in an attempt to hide evidence. He was linked to the murder of Ralph Hill. Now, this was the older man, Cecil Ralph Hill, who supposedly led, left all of his belongings, his money, his homes, whatever it might have been, to Childers. I couldn't find anything much about that either. It just says that Ralph had been found dead in his home and knew James. Police said James was on the scene at the time when they came to check out this, this 911 call, and they supposed that Childers made the call, said that he found him, and I don't think the police investigated him at that time. It wasn't looked at as a homicide until they began to review information that James Childers had sent to the police in 2009, just before his suicide. Um, James stated that there were three more bodies buried on a 96-acre farm, but nothing has been found since. 
He wouldn't tell them where the bodies were buried. He wanted to send them on this, this hunt. They don't know if he was telling the truth about the fact that there may have been more bodies buried out there or if he was just trying to embellish his standing as a serial killer. Now when I researched Kenneth Wiseman, this name came up. This is a separate case. This is not related to Kenneth Wiseman. Uh, this was from McDowell County, West Virginia, Princeton. This is dated October the 13th, 2022. A McDowell County man has been indicted for the 12-year-old stabbing death of his former sister-in-law with whom he was having a relationship. Michael Wiseman, age 56, of Welch, is charged with the first-degree murder of Crystal Cantrell whose body was found August 10, 2010, in the Bluestone River off Gardner Road. According to a criminal complaint filed by um, the West Virginia State Police, Wiseman had a relationship with Cantrell and had been witnessed by individuals stalking and harassing her. The victim had made statements to friends that she was breaking up with him and they were seen arguing along the road by witnesses. They stated that Cantrell had attempted to walk away from Wiseman as he tried to pull her back. They stated that they saw him throw an unknown item over the guardrail and they believed it to be her car keys. The victim's husband called her phone and Michael Wiseman answers. Her husband stated he could hear her in the background screaming for help and for her to give her back her phone. Wiseman left the scene of the homicide and returned to McDowell County, according to the complaint. The accused then fled the state to Ohio and Indiana. He abandoned his Harley Davidson motorcycle. The accused did not return to his full-time job and never contacted his employer or anyone else. Cantrell's body was discovered several days later. Reed, who was a sergeant with the, um, he was a corporal, he was a retired corporal with the state police in West Virginia. During a preliminary hearing, a retired corporal from the West Virginia State Police was asked about Cantrell's cause of death. He said she had two gashes on her throat and a stab wound to her chest, and they believed that the cause of death was the stab wound. The accused was interviewed later in Ohio where he admitted to being the last one to see her and admitted that the two of them had been into a fight and that he smashed her cell phone. However, he denied killing her and stated that he walked away almost to the I-77 interchange where he caught a ride with an unknown male and couldn't give a description of the man or the car. Witnesses called during the preliminary hearing, including members of Cantrell's family, spoke up and said that he had been very controlling and that he had been stalking her and would not accept that she had broken up with him. He had been calling her co continuously, but after that day he never tried to call her again. That showed the police that he knew that she was dead. Reed said witnesses also told that Wiseman would chase Cantrell down Route 52 on his motorcycle and get in front of her and slow her down. Witnesses stated that he pulled her from her vehicle and choked her, screaming a bunch of names at her and would throw her keys away from her so she wouldn't be able to leave. Items collected in the, the investigation included 
and had been submitted to the West Virginia Police Crime Lab for testing included DNA. Michael Wiseman was charged in the 2010 murder of Crystal Cantrell. A trial for a man facing first-degree murder has been rescheduled yet again while a witness for the prosecution serves in the West Virginia Legislature. The trial of Michael Wiseman, 56, of Welch was set for March before Circuit Judge Mark Wills. In October 2022, the Mercer County Grand Jury indicted Wiseman for the first-degree murder in the 2010 stabbing death of his former sister-in-law, 36-year-old Crystal Cantrell, with whom he was having a relationship. Prosecuting attorney Brian Cochran said Thursday that a retired state trooper, Senator Vince Deeds of Greenbrier, could not be subpoenaed to testify while at the trial while legislature is in session. He was a state trooper working the case at the time of the murder. He's now retired and was recently elected as a senator. Could he not have given testimony? Um, I'm sure they have his reports and things. Wiseman's trial has been set for March, but since the legislator was still in session, the trial was rescheduled for May. Cochran said that Deeds was not refusing to cooperate. By law, he cannot be called to testify once the uh, legislature goes into session. So it's taken them 13 years to finally get around to giving this man a trial. And now they can't, they have to postpone it because one of the witnesses is a senator and cannot testify. Wiseman waived his right to a speedy trial and he is currently free on bond from WVVA. McDowell man arrested in a 12 year old cold case. So it's not that he was has been waiting trial all this time. It was that he wasn't arrested until 2022. An arrest has been made in a 12-year-old cold case. This was February of 2022. Michael Wiseman, 56, from McDowell County, West Virginia, was arrested February the 12th, 2022, for the murder of Crystal Cantrell. He's being charged with first-degree murder, and the preliminary hearing is set for February the 22nd. Now, this was 2022, and as of January of this year, they still had not gone to trial. He's free on bond. A motions hearing before Circuit Court Judge Mark Wills was conducted to consider a video statement that he gave to state troopers, Michael Wiseman, gave to state troopers when they visited him in Ohio. In October 2022, the Mercer County Grand Jury indicted him for the killing. Her body was found on August the 10th, 2010 in the Blue Stone River near Spanishburg, West Virginia. And it goes on to tell about their tumultuous relationship and the stalking and the fighting. A little over an hour of the video was played in court, so the, the defense and the state agreed that the judge should view the rest in chambers. Will said he would take the defense's motion under advisement, and um, Wiseman will remain free on bond. The family of a woman brutally stabbed to death 13 years ago continues to await justice in a decades-old saga involving jealousy, brutality, and the quest for a strong case to bring the perpetrator to justice. 36-year-old Crystal Cantrell was found in the Blue Stone River. She had been stabbed to death. Um, he was arrested, now this was 2010, and he was arrested in 2022. Now, she was his brother's ex-wife, and she had begun having a relationship with him. 
and wanted to break up with him and get away from him because he was violent and stalked her and treated her cruelly, but he wouldn't accept the breakup and continued to just stalk her basically until he finally murdered her. Now they're saying, though this was in October of 2022, he is now awaiting a September trial, so September of 2023, and we are now in October of 2023, and I have yet to see anything on there more updated about him. I'll continue to look. It's been very difficult especially for Crystal's children. This is her sister speaking. Annette Key spoke on the anniversary of her sister's death and said that the family has awaited justice for their loved one. It's been especially difficult. Uh, it's unsettling that the perpetrator has gotten away with this so far. She noted that the murderer deprived Crystal of being a grandmother to her son's children. Crystal Cantrell's mother said she wants the ordeal to be over with. I would just like to see this over with and justice done for my daughter. We all miss her so bad and her two sons and so many loved ones cared about her. Why keep postponing and postponing and postponing? It just stays, it just continues to upset the family. Although the murder trial, although the murder occurred 13 years ago, it seems like yesterday. Well, I'm sure it probably stays fresh in their minds because they continue to get their hopes up that he's finally going to trial. He's finally going to be held accountable and testimony is going to come out and then the judge postpones this case again. In April of this year, Wiseman's defense gave a motion to suppress testimony that he first gave to West Virginia State Troopers, and this motion was also granted. So he, they were able to suppress his original statement to the police. So, sadly, this family may never get justice, it seems. I mean, he was witnessed. Her, um, his own brother, her ex-husband, was on the telephone and could hear her in the background screaming for help and screaming to have her telephone given back to her. And days later, she's found dead in the river. He was the last one known to be with her. He left the state immediately abandoned his motorcycle and made his way to Ohio and still has not been charged, you know, he's been charged and indicted but hasn't been put on trial and sentenced. But I couldn't find anything more about her. Um, Obviously, she was missing for a few days. I don't really think that they were really considering. They may have been thinking that she, that he had taken her when he left. But I think that the family pretty much believed that she was dead and... That's really all I could find on that story. I just wanted to kind of do a little, it's not so much an update, but just kind of a little connection. It's really, it's not connected, but Kenneth Wiseman was the name of the man who was found dead in his apartment. And in the videos that I watched and in the stories that I read, they just kind of referred to him as a local male prostitute. Um, I couldn't find any real details out about his life or anything to do with him. Uh, his personal life. If I find anything, I will talk more about it later. And I just wanted to address one little quick thing of one person who commented and said that my facts were false when I spoke about 
um, James Childers, having lived in a camper on his family's farm. Now, this was his own statements. This, these were his own words in the... Uh, and if you try to read the transcript of these tapes and the, the writings that he sent to the police, it's very difficult. I don't know if he was under the influence of drugs or alcohol at the time, but it was incoherent. A lot of it was they tried to decipher his meaning. This person informed me that he owned a house, and this was one of the homes, I guess, that had been set on fire. They believed he had done that to try to conceal evidence of the death of this Carrie Lynn Baker. So I just want to stand corrected. If he did not live in a camper on the family farm, but he did have a camper there, and in his own words he said that he had been picking up women, taking them out to this camper, to this property, and murdering them. And, of course, police only found evidence of two murders, and that was um, Curry Baker and um, the sour wine lady who he had had some kind of a relationship with. And um, so I just want to correct myself if I get something wrong, and I appreciate viewers, you know, giving me information and feedback if, it, if I've said something wrong. Uh, I don't mind at all someone correcting me. I just appreciate appreciate it being done in a constructive way because I'm not here to, you know, get into battles or arguments with anybody about it. But I did go back and read the transcript and try to decipher it. And he did say himself that he had a camper set up out on the property that he would take women out there. He wasn't living there. But he, you know, that was kind of, instead of taking them to his home, which according to police, they do believe that he did kill Baker in his home. And it may very well be that he had nothing else to do with any other murders. He may have had nothing whatsoever to do with this Kenneth Wiseman's death. Um... They did investigate him later after he had already died for the death of Ralph Hill simply because they knew that the man had been murdered but they didn't link um, James Childers to that at the time. Why they didn't, I don't know. But I just wanted to kind of follow up on that and I want to say thanks to everyone who takes the time to watch, who takes the time to comment. And um, thanks for watching.